everyone, Becca here with another Zoom Notes tool overview. In this video, I was gonna go over the table tool. If you're not familiar with that, it is the three by three grid over here on the left side of my screen. Um, as always, if it's not on your toolbar, you can always tap and hold on any of your buttons until this menu pops out and you can tap on the table and then it would be on your bar. Uh, so the table tool is really a pretty simplistic tool. Um, I, I kind of had some ideas for what I wanted to do with it. Some of them worked out well, some of them not so much. Um, but there's definitely some neat things that you can do with it. Um, and some more complex things if you, if you want to put in the time. Uh, my first thought was that I was going to build out my monthly habit tracker, uh, which I do along the, the left side of my months, similar to how Kara had in her original uh, Boho Berry Planner. But when you tap on it again here and you get into the basic interface, you can see the columns and the rows will only go up to 12 in this interface. So obviously if I'm doing a habit tracker for a month, this wasn't gonna work out. I did play around with doing it in sets of 10 and 11 and, and kind of splicing pieces together. And it's definitely doable, uh, but for me it was just easier to go into Procreate and just draw it out real quick and be done. Uh, but if you don't have Procreate or you're not comfortable with it, uh, you could definitely make this work. It would just take a little bit more effort if you want to go past the uh, 12 by 12 grid here. Uh, but let's say you want to set up a weekly habit tracker. It would be really easy um, to do something that fits into that uh, into that window of 12 by 12 here. Uh, so if I was going to set up a weekly tracker, um, you know, maybe I would only want to get maybe I'd want to give myself um, seven columns for each of the days. And um, well, so we'll do eight columns. So we have a. Uh, a place to put what we're tracking and uh, maybe I want to track four habits and um, if I want to track four habits I would add five so that I have a line to put my um, days of the week so once I have that set up you can close that and then I can just draw on my page here and I have a very simple table um, similar to manipulating anything else in in zoom notes when it's selected like this with that light blue square at the top, you know, I can pick it up from the light blue square and I can rotate it around if I wanted it to go a different angle or if I wanted to make a fun table at an angle, um, that blue uh, square at the top will help you rotate it. Let me select it again here. Um, and then these uh, red squares along the side will allow you to resize. Uh, the corner will keep the aspect ratio and the ones on the side will distort it. Um, and if you tap and hold on a so from here now I have a basic table and one of the things that I think is kind of neat about the table tool is if you tap on your text tool the letter A here, I have at the top of my screen, and you tap in one of these boxes, um, it will kind of try to fit that box. And of course, my font is set huge right now. Um, let me bring that down. Okay, so let's try that again with this. There we go. So if your font's not ridiculously huge. So it will, it will kind of size to that box, um, and then you could type in, you know, the headers for your week. And I'm not going to type all those in here, but um, you could type those in. And I just realized I did that in the wrong place. <laughs> so you'd want to leave this one blank. We'll start on Monday now. Um, and then if you were going down the side, you could type in um, your different habits. Um, so you could very easily set this up and put it on all of your pages. Um, one thing I really like about the table tool is that it works really well with the fill tool. Uh, which is this little kind of paint bucket looking thing here. You could tap on the fill tool and uh, pick a color. And then it fills really nicely in the table. So come Monday, if I did all of my habits, I can just tap down these squares and uh, very quickly fill out my habit tracker. Um, so I still plan on using the fill tool for my monthly habit tracker. I just couldn't as easily create my monthly habit tracker with that um, size restriction there. Um, so I did kind of try to play around, close my color here, go back to my table tool. I did kind of try to play around. Um, I think I was tracking six habits and, uh, just making, um, a 10, 10 row table and I was trying to draw them out and, uh, 
did I just do that backwards? Um, and then I was trying to uh, kind of size it the way that I would like and uh, copy and paste and put them on top of each other, which if I tap and hold here with my finger, I can say copy and then I can tap and hold again and I can say paste. And I was trying to just kind of like, you know, line them up like this and kind of build my grid that way. Um, again, totally doable. Just definitely takes a little bit more work if that's the way you're going to go. Woo, here we go. Let me delete that. Um, and delete this one out of my way here too. Anyway, so the, the smaller tables definitely work out better. Um, one thing that's a little bit quirky about it, it, you kind of think of it as like an Excel sheet at this point. Like it's got a grid and it's got text in it. Um, but they're not actually tied together. So if I were to pick up my selection tool and I were to pick up the table and I were to move it around, you can see those objects don't actually go with it. Um, so you need to be mindful of that. You can very easily um, pick up the whole thing and move it. But if you do not select everything on your page and you just try to move the table thinking, you know, it's, it's a it's this contained object here, you will lose your text and your, um, and your color blocking. So just be mindful of picking everything up uh, when you move things around. Um, let's see, over here on this other tab, I went ahead and I created a calendar. Um, so all I did, you know, similar to on that other one, I just tapped on all the boxes and I typed in all the numbers. Um, I'll go back here real quick and show you actually. Um, another thing that you can do uh, when you're in your uh, text tool here, when you tap on your square, um, if you tap on your text tool again, you'll get these options down here at the bottom to align it. Um, so I did all of mine in the center so that they would be centered in the box. So you have a left and a center and a right. Uh, my fonts are generally too big for me to do the, the vertical. Um, I can try to center them in the middle, but I think my fonts are too big. Normally they kind of don't move around, but I like to put them in the center of my box. So that's why my, my Monday here is, is centered. So if I go back over here, um, I just create a quick little calendar layout here using the center. I did a different font across the top for the weekdays and the weekends. And then I did um, a different font throughout the box for um, some numbers. So kind of some fun things you can do here. If I pick up my selection tool and I highlight everything, um, you know, you can resize this and you can move it around. Actually, there's a very um, important setting I need to show you. From your main setting menu, you want to go to your cogwheel and you'll go down here to where it says drawing. And from drawing, you want to go down to the um, category called selection. And there's a toggle here that says scale line thickness. And you want to toggle this on. Um, so if you select a bunch of text boxes and um, typing that you've done in Zoom Notes and you've tried to resize it, you'll, you'll notice that your text box will resize, uh, but your letters and numbers will actually just kind of squish together or move around the page, but they won't actually change. Uh, so if you turn on scale line thickness, then if you highlight text boxes and you try to minimize them all together, your uh, text will actually shrink instead of just moving around the page. So turn on the scale line thickness here in this option. And then if I go back in here, so you can see if I pick up this whole table and I try to shrink it, um, my font will get small as well. If I don't have that option turned on, my font will actually not change sizes. So I go back to my table tool over here and tap on my table, tap on the table tool again to open it. And there's a couple of options here uh, for the table uh, based on the way it looks. Um, so you have an overall line thickness option here, which will change all of the lines on your table, which I like to leave um, pretty small. Um, and then you have two settings here that are solid and soft. So you can see if you change it to soft, it gets kind of that blurred effect. You also have a line opacity, which I will come back to in just a second so you can see everything else. If you turn on dots, it will, maybe if I turn it off a little bit thicker. <laughs> if you turn on the dots, you can see it's creating like a, a dot grid effect instead of having solid lines. Um, shadow obviously will give it that little bit of a drop shadow. And um, oh, the border scale, let me turn this back down. So the border scale um, will help you differentiate between like your header bars. So if I turn up my um, top margin, you'll see that the line that separates the very top line will get thicker. And if I turn up my side margin, 
it will make the one on the leftmost side get bigger. So it's sort of like if you have, um, you know, headers or, or row names that you could differentiate them that way. And then the uh, border scale will do the entire box around um, your table. You could also have a fill. Instead, here I have it transparent. If you toggle first and first and most important, you're gonna to toggle the fill on, and then you can select a color, and uh, it will fill in the background there. So if you want it to have a different color, that's always an option. And then you can turn it down so that it's not so bright. Um, if you want to do that, and then down here you can give it um, explicit size measurements if you have something specific you want to do there. Um, but what I also like to do is turn down the line opacity up here to be basically nothing or um yeah i kind of like it off entirely um and then you could very easily just select all of this oh in the hide it wasn't on my select tool i was on my table tool so i drew another table let me get rid of that um so if you go to your select tool you could select everything here and then shrink it down stick it on the corner of your planner and now you have a little uh, perpetual calendar that you can have for the entire year. You could also draw little shapes over them to create hyperlinks and make each one of those, you know, link to the exact day or at the beginning of each week. Um, so I think it works really well for creating a quick little calendar that you can keep on your page like that and also great for habit trackers. Um, but overall, it's, it's pretty simplistic. Um, similar to the pen tool, if you have something that you really like, um, once you get the settings the way you like them, you can save them down here into your favorites. So these are the defaults that came with uh, Zoom Notes. If you use one of those as the favorites, it will draw the table like that. So from here, you could actually then take your selection tool, you could select your whole calendar that you have down here, and you could open up your symbols tool and add, hit the plus sign there, and then you could create um, a sticker out of it. So if you have you know a bunch of weekly spreads or maybe a daily spread for every day of the month and you always like to have that calendar there to see the entire month you know you would now be able to create all of your spreads and then just immediately just pop that calendar up there in the corner um, if you would like to do that uh, and as you can see here let me go over here to a, um, a blank page uh, if you can see here my symbols this here is actually the habit tracker that i was playing around with before I drew the one out in Procreate. And it actually turned out okay. It was just, it took more effort to do this than it took to do it in Procreate. Uh, so I essentially just drew uh, like a 10 by, what do I even have here? 10 by seven grid and then a, an 11 by seven grid. Sized them next to each other, got them same size. And then just kind of tried to put them very close to each other so that they would uh, look like one continuous line. I think if you look really closely, you can see I think right in this area here, the line's a little thicker than the rest of them because that's where they're where they're overlapping. Um, and then after I did that, I drew a one column by six row and turned it on its side and then entered my text in. Actually, I think I entered my text in and then rotated it. Um, so I went ahead and just drew that column out. Let's get back to the blank setting here. Um, I went ahead and just made a one column for my, for my header at the top top and then from here you can tap on your text tool type in here type in your habit um, this time I centered it to the left so you could tap and hold with your finger hit select all actually you don't have to select it that's just change your font um, you can just tap on the text tool and go down here and hit left so it would justify it to the left um, and then after I typed in all of my habits I just, um, I picked up everything with the selection tool, used the blue box to rotate, um, and then stuck it up there at the uh, top of my, of my grid there. Uh, a trick about that, if you're trying to rotate something, um, since I don't keep the, the snapping on, it can be really hard to rotate um, specific angles. Um, so what I will generally do is tap on my um, select tool here and go into my settings and I will turn on the uh, selection guidelines. And then if I were to select this and um, rotate it, you'll see it'll snap very easily um, to the 90 degree angle. And then after I get my stuff rotated, I would go back in here, back to the, the cog wheel at the top, turn off selection guidelines because I don't generally use them. Um, and then I just moved it up here and uh, sized it down. So it will work. Uh, 
just a little bit more effort. Um, but still will work out great um, when you come trying to fill it out with the fill tool here. You can very easily um, tap on these and fill it out. Um, so hopefully that was helpful and thank you so much for watching.